Okay, got this little camera set up for a little bird's eye view of a, of a carving pattern I got going here for these back jockeys. So anyway, just a single occurring flower here with a simple leaf structure and stem work and that sort of thing. So just uh, wanted to give you the view that I would have as I look at this from uh, my point of view. And and hopefully uh, that way you won't have a hand in the way to see what's going on and that sort of thing. So got my Chuck Smith old smoothie here and uh, just a straight 3 8 blade in it. And I think this is one I got from him, one of the last ones with the 5 8 barrel. It's kind of a husky bugger, but uh, something I got used to years ago and uh, just kind of sticking with what I've gotten used to. So anyway, this is kind of my go-to knife these days. So those of you who have been a part of my classes or, or purchased a DVD uh, on floral carving and that sort of thing, have seen this demonstration. Maybe you've uh, given it a shot yourself, uh, but it's a, we call the push and twist method, where we're back and off from from the uh, pressure, and then pushing with uh, with my forefinger. So we're coming along here and pushing downward and all of those little scallops are are where it will be undercut. So there's there's a a reason for for all of this stuff. So this pressure and release method it uh, just pretty much corresponds with how the the beveling and, and under, undercutting is going to go later on. And also, it makes for um, it's easier on your hand. You don't have to have all this pressure all the time. So, let's cut these leaves and I'll show you. Push and twist, push and twist. And uh, my classes, I one of the exercises I have everybody do is to run some lines with that push and twist method. If you're unfamiliar with it, then you might try laying down a straight line with the push and twist rather than trying to manage a, a curved line like these leaves or petals on this flower would be. So, one thing that I want to emphasize too um, is is a part of this whole package is is all of the downward pressure is exerted by my forefinger right here, my forefinger. I got to get that on the camera. So, anyway, uh, I know the tendency is for to grip this barrel tight and put downward pressure with. Uh, with the, the grip on the barrel. But that really hinders things when it comes to being able to rotate this and take maximum uh, advantage of, of the pad of your thumb, rotating clear to the knuckle and clear out to the tip of your, your thumb right there. So if you're gripping this really tight, it makes it really, really hard to do smooth cuts. So I'm gripping the barrel no tighter than is required to control it and and the pressure is coming from the from my uh, let's see if we can adjust this a little bit upward there we go so I've got this nice long cut right here so come in here And this is almost entirely an arm situation where a long, nice, long cut like that, I 
get my arm into it and and don't don't not worry so much about what's happening with my fingers and kind of laying the blade down uh, when we make uh, fine cuts like that push and twist deal we're we're driving the tip into the leather like that when I'm making a long cut like this I'm laying laying the the blade down a little bit more into the leather and the blade itself will help guide things along in a manner that hopefully will make for a nice long smooth cut so see i'm maximizing i'm cut it a, a tight scroll cut like that and going the other way. So I'll end that with kind of a little bit of a cap right there. And the reason for that is I'll put a, a mule, a little pedal stop there and then some mule foot uh, tracks right in there. Sounds like my mutt drinking out of my bucket of water over here. I don't know if you can hear that or not. <laughs> Everybody should have a shop dog, right? Okay. One thing about these cuts, these these uh, grass leaf cuts like this, that uh, encourage you to, once you you, you start in deep and then you, you're backing off on your pressure almost immediately. And what I see oftentimes in my classes is uh, people bearing down all the way and then end it abruptly. So we don't want any abruptness on, on these cuts. These are, these are feathered cuts. These are designed to be nice, long, smooth. Uh, cuts here that make a nice smooth transition okay yeah just about got things handled here with this hopefully you're able to see what's going on with this okay Got that all cut. Next thing to do then is to uh, show you how I would shade and tool up that uh, flower right there. 